I, were, I saw one or two, and, and I've been noticing them in a bunch of different areas of San Luis Obispo this weekend. Mm -hmm. It makes such a big difference. Yeah. It really transforms those yeah. tagged up, stickered boxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this one. Quickly wanted to mention that um, we did hire an intern uh, who was working the past few weeks to do a new track inventory. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the condition of all the new tracks out there. They're they're not used. They're they're broken. They you know uh, they're damaged. Um, so uh, this intern uh, put together a database of the locations and the conditions. I think we found about 80 80 something uh, new tracks that needed to be repaired. So. We'll take that list, and Carrie has a contact at the City uh, Bureau of Street Services, uh, hoping that with that list, we did a lot of the footwork for them, and they'll come out uh, and do some enforcement to get those up to code. Matthew, do you know if there's any self uh, pay phones left? There are, yeah. So that's on the list to do an inventory. Good. Yeah. There are, believe it I actually not. saw a guy using mm -hmm. one the other day. <laughs> oh, gosh. For a phone call? Yeah, he was yelling. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them are broken and, and don't work at all. Right. There are a few yeah. that, that still work. I mean, oh, that has got to be toxic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in your packet, there is a map. Um, this is an exciting project um, that we've been approached by Hunt Design to potentially work on with. Yeah, we can do it. So he has been contracted with the Department of Transportation through a contract they have with Xerox, believe it or not, um, to do an electronic public parking signage program. So the maps that you have in front of you, this is not, I'll stress this, this is not the final plans. These are not the final locations of the electronic signs, but um, this is all kind of the preliminary draft work. Um, but you'll see what they have in mind. It's, um, we're looking at those, you know, uh, electronic signs that have number of parking spaces with uh, directional arrows. So I think the hope is to, you know, get folks out of their cars and stop them from circling the streets trying to find parking and uh, make it easier for them to find all the public parking lots because there, there are many. So with that, um, Wayne Hunt has worked with a lot of the, the BIDs throughout Los Angeles to do uh, pedestrian wayfinding signage. So um, as it stands, these are two separate projects, but there is an opportunity here to uh, tack on a pedestrian way, wayfinding signage element, um, just to give you an idea of, of what we're talking about here. Um, but there, there could be some substantial savings if we were to contract privately with, um, with Wayne and his, his design firm to, to do this. Um, so we're still talking about what our role could be in that, and this is kind of a, a multi-entity multi, uh, uh, project. It would uh, take coordinating with the chamber and the council office and uh, Hollywood Heritage. Um, but Wayne thinks that the, uh, the preliminary design work for something like this would cost about $70,000, and that would incorporate roughly 60 uh, pedestrian signs. And that would be spread over two bids and possibly even three, the, the media district. So that would be um, all of the work to get the project shovel ready. And then we would be looking at implementation costs, which similar programs, I know the one in um, Westwood Village was about $300,000. So um, obviously that would be um, a shared cost among different organizations and probably a phased implementation as well. So again, we're still still talking about what our role might be, and when we have something a little more firm, then we'll bring that back next month to have a greater discussion. This is really good stuff. We've been talking about doing this for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> is, is there possible, though, that we can actually have a private retail sponsor them? Because most of those points of interest there are public. So naming rights, I'll have Hollywood toys and costume, everybody chips in who's interested and have an arrow pointing for them. Yeah, we actually, Wayne came to our last streetscape committee uh, to talk about this proposal. And apparently the, the parameters are very strict. We can't even, for example, um, we can't include the name of a destination like the Pantages. That would be, um, it's too commercialized. So uh, what they've done downtown is, is said, you know, uh, historic theaters. 
so there is there are issues with um, with those types of things. So it would be very kind of generic. Um, who, who governs that? DOT? Or? Yeah, it's DOT. So um, the council office also thought they deal with finding sources of funds to help pay for. It. So it's not like the bids would have to do the whole thing. But right. um, I mean, chamber would help. I'm sure. Part of the chamber. Yes, yeah, so we, I think our role would be kind of a steering committee capacity, bringing stakeholders to the table, identifying, you know, landmarks that we want to include and possible placement <coughs> and locations for these signs. So um, it's exciting and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, we're getting looped in to, to help with us. There may be some money from some of these parking operators that operate the lots too. Yeah. Well, this the, this is for the public parking lots only, and that was another question that we but had. But they're operated, aren't they? They have sure. contract. Sure, yeah. And the, and they make more money when those signs are up, so they may yeah. they may be willing to, to donate. Yeah, and we also talked about the possibility of including the the non city owned parking lots as well, since there's a lot of you know underground parking in Hollywood as well. So again, we'll keep you posted as those conversations continue. So the next uh, document that you have is this uh, Victor Stanley uh, Relay Smart Can Lid. It's an, another thing I'm excited about, and the timing is really good as well. We've been thinking about um, ways we can better secure the receptacles out there, and these domed lids were one of the ideas. And uh, Victor Stanley actually reached out to us because they've just launched this new product line. It's called the, the Relay Series. and it, uh, it has a sensor embedded in the lid of the can that monitors the, the fill level, and it ties into a, um, an application that you can access on your phone. You can get notifications on uh, the current capacity of the trash can. <coughs> if it's almost full, they'll let you know, so you will never have a full trash can. You can get, get there before it happens. So um, as a part of this pilot, because it is a brand new program, they want Hollywood to participate. So they're offering us 12 of these to start for a six month program. No cost, no commitment, uh, no obligation. They'll come out, they will um, install them for us, and it's great because you're just retrofitting the existing models that are out there. They will anchor down, and uh, if they ever get tampered with, we'll get a notification. If anyone ever lights a fire in the can, which has happened, we'll get a notification that the trash can is hot. So uh, it's pretty uh, smart technology. Um, but we've submitted in all of the paperwork and expect to, to get this going in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and if we decide that this is a beneficial product for us, uh, the, the cost per lid is about $250. Uh, How many lids? Uh, so right now we have uh, 158 models out there, so we'd be looking at that. But the average, uh, the regular cost for a standard lid and a non-smart lid is 200 bucks. So we're looking at a $50 difference for uh, all of these capabilities. And then there's a, a $7 per month data fee uh, per can to tap into their uh, online system. As well. Here it comes. Which yeah. 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 he, <laughs> he said is negotiable. So. Uh, the thing that's good about that also, it would show us data on which cans are getting filled up quicker than others. Yeah. Yep. So we'll uh, be talking to the Street Safe Committee on the best placement. I think we have an idea on Hollywood Highland, Hollywood and Vine uh, to test those out to start. Um, Can they handle it? When the, the was it streetscape or uh, shoes are street plus street street plus street plus street can they handle the notifications? Yeah, and we, we haven't really fully uh, talked about how that would look yet. I mean, notifications could even go to me, and I can you know relay that. Um, so we haven't quite figured that piece out yet. Okay. Yeah. So there are also twelve of these monitors starting in the beginning of the No. It's a, just a six month pilot, uh, no commitment, no obligation. But what certificate teams are getting? What, what's in it for them? Um, they, they said nothing. So, yeah, it, they said it's an opportunity for us, a PR opportunity, um, to showcase this new technology that we're the first to try out. But there's been no discussions about naming use or anything like that. But, yeah. Any other questions about that? Mm -hmm. 
the smartest sales approach on their part. Just the taste. Just the taste. Just the taste. Just Okay, and then uh, how much do you uh, do the big belly solar collector um, contact me? Units cost? They're very expensive. I think they're about three thousand dollars a unit. Because we we were looking in, we had an offer to to take some adopt some, to adopt some, but the maintenance costs if they were damaged or broken were incredibly high. Yeah. Yeah. Some big bellies, right? big bellies. Yeah, our yeah. current vendor also said they're not a big fan of those. Yeah, they we talked some, to them about that. Yeah. They've had some bad experiences. They said not a big bellies. So. Yeah, but this is you know the next best thing at yeah. a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. Then the last thing to mention, this will be a quick one. Uh, we've been going through the permitting process to get the uh, trees trimmed in zone one. Uh, it's taken about seven weeks to get uh, those permits from the city, but we were hoping to have final sign off on that uh, tomorrow. Um, we will be trimming 375 trees along the Walk of Fame. Um, again, all of zone one. And that process takes about two to three weeks, um, but hopefully we will be starting soon, as soon as the city will allow us to. Has it been easier this year as compared to last year, or, you know, getting those permits? And, uh, yeah, our vendor uh, said that it, it's never taken this long before. I think they're just, yeah, but there, there hasn't been any issues per se, just how long it's taken. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Seven? Or, uh, the first one is actually Gallo and Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. Yeah. Hollywood. So we are tentatively planning a walk around September 28th of the property owners to describe a little bit of our respective buildings. This example is the best way. Next door. It was originally 1919 a restaurant and it came around about 1921 and became a bank. I did have to find out what the charter was, but I don't think it was Wells Fargo or Bank of America. 1921, it was actually demolished. I don't know what kind of building it was. That's your building? That's my building, right next door. And in 1925, construction started on what is there now, which is what's referred to as a zigzag mosaic design. 1928 was completed and the original lease of which I procured a copy of, and incidentally, John, a commercial lease right now, how many pages is it? 18. Standard. Yeah. 18. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know, 12 to 20, depending on how, whether you have an attorney who really wants to run the bill off. <laughs> right. And then, it, yeah, I mean, it, it depends. If you get a, that's the standard AIR lease. The, the, some standard some AIR. high-rise office buildings where they've got their standard lease, you go into the Dirk to Griggs building or Brian Folds, and you're looking at a 35, 40 page document. 1928, it was 90 pages. Oh, oh my God. God. Yes, yes. And, and I'll, I'll bring it next time, and it was legal size. Oh my gosh. Bull just absolutely and tight. Yeah, tight. And tight. Yeah, and tight. Absolutely. Yeah. I believe it was double space. So we can <laughs> size and type a little bit different. Yeah. I don't know if they had a font 12 back then, but it was, it was, it's pretty. It was the red yeah. tiger yeah. 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 the, yeah. the, yeah. the gold standard? No, yeah. no. Because it, it was on the Supper Club and yeah. the Fox yeah. and the Vogue. The and they, so they didn't pay any rent. I mean, they just, it was made. JJ Newberry's was the original tenant. The owner was a gentleman named Mr. McCurry, I believe his name was. I'm not 100% sure. He claimed that he was the architect of the building. JJ Newberry came in there, and in 1932, that was the first time Coca Cola asked for a permit from the city for the Coca Cola sign. If you guys remember the old electric neon sign yeah. that used to be there, it actually became that sign in 1952. So we're talking, this is a lot of. A lot of history going over the years of consistency because J.J. Newberry's was there up until 1980. Was that a haberdashery? What was that? Yeah, it was a five and nine, and there was a counter, and all the counters that you used to see were used to have five and dimes. They had a little skillet in the back, and it was on the east side, west side, west side of the what's now the toy store. So it's been pretty consist consistent over the years. I have uh, tried to find some pictures, and I think I have a lead that I'm going to be able to get some pictures over the years. 
So I think that's kind of the gist that we want to get with the property owners to show, hey, you know what, part of the community, we have history here, let's get involved and share what we have. Um, I think our next, so like I said, September 28th? 28th. 28th is our meeting with a projected October beta of our walking tour. So I thought I would use this for the first time. Oh. It is a dry erase marker. Double check. <laughs> Double <laughs> right. So Old Hollywood, the way we're defining it, is going to be uh, Las Palmas, right here. And it's going to go to Coinga. And so this walking tour that um, we're talking about we're, we're inviting every single property owner. Now we may not get them all, but it's a way for us to reach out. We're talking to them, engaging them, and you know we would we'll start here, but we'll walk from building to building to do exactly what Gallo just did. What is the history? When did you get a hold? You know, when did you get a hold of the building? What is your plan for the future? Because and giving people notice because if it's not looking real good right now, I'm like I want to clean it up a little bit or wash the windows, but. Um, you know, little by little, we're, we're, we're knitting together this, this section of the boulevard in a common, you know, uh, <coughs> partnership. And they all kind of um, share a common, like, asset, which is this, this history. So that's going to be exciting. We met with um, Christy McAvoy for lunch. Uh, uh, Devin and April and I, uh, maybe a month ago, shared with her what we're doing. So let me make sure the historical people think this is good and relevant. She's thrilled. She also said that she has a in storage a diorama of this section of Hollywood Boulevard, which oh, wow. apparently is pretty massive. It needs to be put back together. And that if we could find a place to put it on display. Um, you, the window. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. I think it's, I, I, yeah. I'm talking to Gallo, because Gallo is thinking about setting aside a portion of his retail store into like a little history corner? Yes, we ta I'm talking with next door and conceivably we may have a thousand square feet that will house an unofficial museum. Uh, museum. vintage pictorial museum of old Hollywood. And if we can get the guy around in the middle, that would be a very yeah, nice Yeah, something is pretty big. Yeah, <laughs> so we didn't even know that existed. Then the other thing that kind of, this was completely serendipitous, but it, 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 it meshes with what we're doing. Um, Fran Offenhauser, who some of you know is also with Hollywood Heritage, um, engaged an, uh, an intern, a student intern, to do kind of a um, analysis of what's going on in the Cherokee parking structure right now. The Cherokee parking structure, for those of you who have been around for a while, was intended to be the parking structure for this part of the neighborhood. Uh, because this, this area is challenged by parking. It was built in um, the mid-90s. And um, what her uh, uh, research showed is that the average occupancy there is about 57%. Um, it's amazing. Everybody says there's no parking in Hollywood in the town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, nobody really knows it's there. Right. It's hard to well, see. nobody wants to go in. It's scary. And the, so, so um, we found this to be an opportune time as we're, you know, looking at how do we, you know, rev the engine of this part of the neighborhood to have a conversation with the city about the Cherokee parking structure. So we had an initial meeting at City Hall with the council office and, and the chamber, and Amir Sadati is on the chamber. He used to be deputy uh, director of DOT, and he's on the chamber as a chamber member now. And we laid out some um, observations about uh, challenges with um, parking, the parking structure right now, and what some of the ideas might be um, with respect to improving the safety, the, the trees, the signage, uh, uh, val a validation pilot perhaps. Could we pilot a validation program? Um, so these things have been laid out in this letter. And while we're at it, we also asked if the city would be willing to do a um, a study of doing angled parking in this section of Hollywood to kind of, you know, you'd be driving on Hollywood and suddenly it would, it would shift and there would be two lanes of traffic and angled parking, which would increase the parking and also give it kind of that large front feel, which might um, mm -hmm. improve the, 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 the neighborhood experience. 
And then also we noticed that there are still tow-away zones out there that are left over from the old nightclubs. And it's heartbreaking to see cars just being towed away at six o'clock for, for no reason. I'm so glad you, you brought that up. I read that and, and there's one out in front of Kitchen 24 for lunch, you know, a couple hours at lunch. Yep. And people park there all the time and they immediately get towed and they come out and they're like, what's the, you know, what's the deal? There's no valet here. Yeah. And then also right in front of your parking lot, Hollywood and Vine right there, the, that's where that light club burned down. That, that I, right out, that's when you bought it, it was right after that, right? And, uh, and that's, that he had the valets on Vine Street right there from Hollywood up. And you park there after six o'clock and you come back, your car's gone. And all along your Geisha house. And right. So these it just people, turns people off who come to visit. Yeah, I'm not going back. Never go back. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so this is this is in in the works as well, which is kind of perfectly dovetails with what we're trying to do right now. Um, the other thing, um, just from a, a media standpoint, there was a very uh, concerning editorial in the LA Times two weeks ago. Uh, the Venice bid. Uh, the city has um, turned back the election that was uh, undertaken to um, approve the ordinance to set up the Venice bid, and apparently the city council um, stopped the uh, testimony for and against, perhaps prematurely, and the city of attorney opined that the um, ordinance to establish the bid needed to be rescinded or rescinded, I guess. And the Venice um, Bid Formation Committee is going to have to redo their election. But what happened, there was an editorial in the LA Times in the next day or so, and I don't know, did we include it in this packet? Is this thing on? Yeah. It, what's concerning about it is that it kind of suggests that when bids get involved in addressing homeless issues, that it's basically a harassment mindset. And um, I have been trying to sit on or think about whether or not we should try to meet with the LA Times to point out all the things we do. We, I would argue we save lives out here. We don't harass lives. So did talk to, with the security committee about it yesterday and they kind of felt that we should be a bit proactive about this. So somebody is operating with some misinformation in the LA Times. So that's that. Um, Joe, is now? Yeah, just real quickly, next Tuesday, September 20th, um, bright and early, I think it's 7.30 or 8 in the morning, uh, there's going to be another BizNow conference here in Hollywood. It'll be at the East Town Apartments, and uh, anybody who's interested, there's 23 tickets left. I saw today online when I logged in. If you'd like to buy one, we have a, a discount code since we're participating in it. Um, so if you're interested, let me know, and I can get you that, and love to have you there. And, we have an all-star panel featuring our very own Frank Stefan. So um, anybody who's interested in coming, if you haven't been to one of these events, they're great. It's uh, it's just a really positive, usually you know, usually very positive event for the neighborhood and the community, and it's, it gets a lot of great eyes in the room to look at Hollywood and yeah, a lot of new eyes. So it's uh, they're a lot of fun. So I'm I'm really excited that this is our second one that we've done. And so uh, when I spoke to the organizers today, they said that they had planned on selling. 126 tickets and they're at 225 as of today. So um, it's a very, they, they said it's already a successful event. So. Is that East Town? It's at East Town, yeah. It'll right. be in one yeah. of the. Yeah, probably in the great room or whatever you call it. Retail space. Uh, are still yet to be leased retailer. Oh, okay. So, yeah. You might, you might sign one of these. Maybe. 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 <laughs> you never know. Good crowd. Okay. Um, two weeks ago, we had our fifth annual Sunset and Dine event um, through the Sunset and Dine bid. There's some remnants here of our um, windows displays in the corner, so you can see what that looked like. Um, but even though this is through the Sunset and Vine bid, out of the 29 restaurants and bars that participated, 11 of them were from the Hollywood Entertainment District. So it does um, showcase restaurants in both the bids that we manage here. Um, 
And it was great for the center because they were able to host it this year. So not only were they the beneficiary and they did make over $3,000 off of the silent auction that we helped put together. Lauren actually got a lot of the prizes for that. So they were, were able to interface with people, make the um, $3,000 and show off their new facility over at the center. So it was a really great night. Um, Thank you to any of you that made it, especially to Tony, who helped put our sage lights up at the very last minute. Very last minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tony saved the day. So like, who do we know that could put sage lights up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's actually some extension cords. I figured they were taking around something. Okay, well, I'll take them. <laughs> I went, it was really fun. I didn't put any lights up. I right. drank <laughs> wine, but it was a good time. Thank you. So, um, music festival. So I wanted to bring the current on, um, you know, our, our discussions and, and uh, planning around a festival. And I think that um, kind of pleased with where we are right now in this um, journey that we've been on trying to ascertain what is the best approach to take for uniting Hollywood around some type of festival that celebrates what is very special about this neighborhood and all the assets that are here. And, you know, as you know, we, we've kind of come full circle. We started two years ago um, stimulated by what some other cities do on a very grand scale and trying to figure out how is it that we could emulate or get there. And, and, we, and we, we started kind of small and humble with what we did last, last year. And then with our little planning committee and the staff, we were planning um, to, to do a, a one-day festival in November using a parking lot. All those things have been, you know, kind of committed and, and uh, budgeted, and we were working on raising the sponsorships, and we're getting some good um, response from people. We had a budget of about $68,000, $70,000 to do this. And, um, and then I, <laughs> I, my litmus test is whether or not I, I lose sleep over things or not, and I was losing sleep over this, and so it's a good sign that, hmm, you know, is this is this really the right thing to do? This is this is new territory for us, and it's um, you know not our core competency, perhaps, and a bit of a risk. And um, so I I actually set up meetings with some of our key people. I thought, you know what? We're in the Hollywood Entertainment District. We have Capitol Records. We have Avalon. We've got Jimmy Kimmel. We've got Peter Lander. You know, we've got Fonda. We've got assets that most kids in America would die for, and they're right here. And um, we just never had really gotten those people in a room to talk to each other about a vision for what could happen here in Hollywood. So started setting up these conversations. It started with Capitol Records and John Lyons in the room. Uh, a couple weeks ago, um, great synergy in that meeting. And John Lyons, who you all know, um, he's he's a visionary. He's like, yeah, I can pull this off, <laughs> you know, no problem. In November, I'm like, not sure we want to do it in November. You know, maybe next year. But he's he's um, he's excited about um, doing something that would be for the neighborhood. Um, talked with Doug DeLuca at Jimmy Kimmel's show, who we had also previously this year met with on a couple of occasions and actually brought him into parts of Hollywood that he had never walked before. And he really liked the idea as well, um, working with folks, talked a little bit to David, to Leslie, talked to Michael Gargano, who's on the phone. Um, and so um, what I'm asking for is basically the board's blessing to um, create a, a working group of a couple board members, you know, definitely Leslie and Michael, and maybe David if he's, if he's interested, um, and the key stakeholders, which would be um, Doug DeLuca, um, Capital, Maureen Schultz, John Lyons, um, I think those would probably be the key ones for now, to um, articulate a vision for what these players could do together with us helping to, um, if we're like the glue that holds people together, keep them organized. Uh, to develop kind of like a five-year plan for this festival. What I'm learning, and Monica and I talked about this at length yesterday, I think one of the interesting things about being on this journey for the last two years is that we've learned a lot about how these things work or don't work. Even Devin just attended, he said a fantastic seminar at IDA last week where Toronto shared 
all the work they had done to get to a place where they now have an annual music festival and their research and their due diligence and, and all that. So the, the staff has been like searching out these opportunities to learn from other other downtowns and um, and talk to people who are experts at this. And one of the things that we have learned is that when you put on a major event, whoever are the, the for-profit partners taking the financial risk, they need to have a couple years to recover. It's, it, it may not make money the first year or it may barely make money the first year. Um, so this business community would want to be aligned with people that you trust and that everybody was growing in the same direction. Oh, when I talked to Doug DeLuca this week, he, he said, what I like about this is that this could be something um, for Hollywood by Hollywood. Um, so so that's, that's what I'm asking for. We're gonna put the November Festival back in a box. And um, uh, now I will tell you that one of the things that is, is gonna happen on Monday, kind of with or without us because you know, these are entrepreneurial people. There is gonna be a meeting with Capital Records, Avalon, and Doug DeLuca to talk about whether or not doing something in November is possible still. Capital Records is celebrating their 75th anniversary this year. It is officially launched on November 15th, and they had always wanted to do some kind of a street concert like Arcade Fire they did a couple years ago. Um, and you know, had not been able to find an artist willing to, to do that. But Maureen is going to bring in one of their A&R people. Because I think, I guess what I'm learning about the music business is that if someone happens, there's, there's so many musicians who live in LA. And if it's a matter of taking an Uber to Hollywood to perform and going back home again, sometimes you can pull that up because you don't have to put them on an airplane and fly them halfway across the country. So there's gonna be a meeting um, to talk about whether or not something this year is even possible. And um, Devin, do you wanna pass it around? This is a, I'll just pass it around and we'll take a look at it. This is actually a rendering of something that Avalon put together just to kind of show the potential vision for a, a festival that would involve a stage um, on both sides of, of Vine Street along, well, I guess there's three stages on that, on that rendering and closing line between Hollywood and Yucca to create kind of an integrated festival experience. So when you look at that, it's like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Carrie, did you guys go downtown to the one that they have downtown, the arts and theater walk? It's no. the same concept. I went the to it. Off Broadway, the night on Broadway? Yeah, the, and it's sponsored by a councilman or? Yeah, a, a, yeah or started. Similar theater, I mean, and we went down to it. It was amazing. And you could walk in and each theater would have like a 10 or 15 minute little, um, you know, part of their show and then stop. And then that group would walk out another group and they had bands on each side. And then they had like kind of funky art, different art things happening. There was like a music thing with people, everyone had headphones on, right? Mm. And so they were all oh, dancing to the same song, but none of us could hear the song. Yeah. And so yeah. just super fun. Um, so I don't know much about it. I just yeah. attended it, but it was neat. We should go on a field trip. Yeah, yeah. when is it's like it's in January. Yeah. Can't remember when I went. So that is kind of where we are. Awesome. I wanted to get your thoughts on it. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that not anymore. No. Hey, Terry. Yeah. Michael. Um, just also a thought about the committee. I think you know. Notice effective. I think our, our most powerful role we would have is to really think about what kind of community benefits we want to see come out of the festival and so that we can take it into, you know, the, the inception so that going forward you know, we have a, uh, a real benefit coming back to the community. I think, I think that's really the big role. And I think, you know, we bring in an operator with it. John Lyons or others, um, and might be the festival experts, and really just leverage off of their operational expertise and also their financial resources. And and we help coalesce the community, and, and I've been doing with Travel Records, and Jimmy Kimmel, and you know, Avalon, bringing them all together. But we should really think about what we as a community want to see come out of this, and give us some definitions. This might be too. 
wayfinding signs. Yeah. yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Michael. Yeah, I mean, no, no. so were you seeking a motion? So moved. Second. So um, the renewal planning, we do need to start to pull together a working group on, um, you know, beginning to, now that we have our map, that was the whole point. <laughs> Does someone make sure we can erase that? Um, uh, okay. <laughs> no. Um, so we did get a few volunteers out of the sunset side, and so I'm, Curious to know who would like to work on this. It's really important. So there are two different groups, right? The Hollywood group is one group, and the Sunset group is another group. Right, but we're going to do this together. As I had mentioned at the last meeting that we had, where we were, you know, Sarah came in and shared what she had learned. She had done some research with seven bids in the state, where she shared the best practices of, of um, what's new in the bid in the bid creation world. Um, and everyone had asked, well, Carrie, what is your recommendation or thought about whether we merge these bids or not? And um, my recommendation, and it can still be teased apart, but it seemed like everybody wanted to hear, was that we form two bids, but we ultimately have one board. So one board, a larger board, would manage two bids. Because we're kind of doing that now. We're having these completely duplicative board meetings. Um, <coughs> and uh, the city could contract, so you'd have like one 501c6, call it the Hollywood Sunset Property Owners Alliance or whatever, and with uh, 21 board members. And But also I think a more robust committee system where the committees actually operate with quorums and have decision-making authority, so you devolve some of the responsibility to the committee levels. That's what we, we are learning that our sister bids, as they get older, they're moving into boards that might meet every other month with an executive committee in the interim and then a robust committee structure. Now, of course, none of that is, you know, you're still years away from that, but I I don't see us forming one merge bid. You know, I just don't see that there's a stomach for that amongst the, um, the two groups of stakeholders in the meeting. With. Now that could change, because when we get everyone in the room um, and we start playing with that map and we start looking at um, you know, what, what do we add, what do we take away, um, uh, and, and the other thing that we're going to begin thinking about are different ways of doing zones of service. So as an example today, this is a great example, um, instead of having um, zones that are linear based on street, a, a good example would be to have, like we would call this the tourist zone. And so in the tourist zone, you have very different needs than you do down here in whatever, you know, the gateway, the gateway zone. Um, this is an area where there might actually be, um, with this new movement toward uh, regulating the street characters and giving the, uh, you know, the city is working on an ordinance where 20 to 30 passes would be given out each day for people to um, function in the zone between Orange and Highland on the street that maybe the bid would play a role in administering those passes and that would be paid for. That would, the assessment would reflect that in the tourist zone, but you wouldn't need that obviously down there. So and, and in Sunset, there is the possibility of having something along the lines of the um, studio district. Not a lot of retail, you got big walled studio areas that have big blank walls all around these properties, and their needs would be very different than a zone that might be right around Sunset and Vine. So those are the, you know, as we start to get all of you in the room and we start thinking about the rhythms of Hollywood and how do we match the assessments to the needs in these particular areas, if, if that group of property owners said, oh, that was let's just have one bid, we'd certainly do that. But right now, that's, and my feeling right now is to, is, to, is to continue to have two bids. And the area that is new territory is this area from Selma to Casill. 
this is right now not in, a, in either bid. So I happened to be at the chamber luncheon today and I introduced myself to the folks at the Crossroads project, which is gonna be, where's Crossroads of the World? Right to the next, right. next to Boston right. Soccer. One, one, one more block. One more, one more. Yeah, here? Right Boston Soccer. Right okay, there, right there. so the Crossroads project is gonna be pretty big. And the other side is Boston Soccer. Over here yeah. too, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were there, I gave them my card and said, you know, we need to have a conversation because the bid could, could. Is it Schwartzman? It was, no, but it was Heritage Heritage Development. Heritage Development. Yeah. Okay. And then Musicians Institute, you know, has bought property to create a campus effect. They bought this property here at the corner and they want to have kind of an integrated campus kind of feeling. A whole strip. A whole yeah. strip, they yeah. bought all this too? Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> um, so, I've talked about this, so we got to get you guys involved in a conversation also. Oh, and then LA Recording School has all, always said that they wanted to have, um, I think they're down here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. right there. Yeah. So this is a little bit of a challenging area on the other side of the street. So this, this is probably the most important conversation we need to have in the next couple of months about whether or not those properties come into, it could come into Hollywood going south or Sunset going west. So it's so much fun. Who wants to do this? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's the opportunity for everybody to bring out some opinions and ideas to the committee. So it's, it's something that, it's not like it's going to be today. But no, no. It, it's if you don't know bother, I will be calling. <laughs> yeah. So we're not going to pressure anybody today, but that's <laughs> good. It's coming. <laughs> 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 I need a request um, that before the next meeting, put the put the lines on the on the map to show the current to show that you know mm -hmm. all the bids mm -hmm. so we can really see what the the delineation is. Would that be fun? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am interested. Okay. Okay. I'm just throwing it out there now. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure. uh, <laughs> John, 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 John Johnson. Oh, JT, again? You are I'm going to wait for the call. <laughs> 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 I'm going to get something out of it, a glass of wine or something. You got a nudge already. We will officially give you a call. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Karen, I'll do it if I'm not too new to okay. the no, process, no. but I'm very interested. And I think with it, when you're in, we also don't have a spin that we have to Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, perfect. That should be great. Um, next on the agenda is, I will have my final budget. President, we started with coffee, and I think the, um, and I think it was very successful to hear from stakeholders and also to engage people that we haven't met before. So I think we're very valuable to hear. Um, so it's going to be on September 30th, which is a Friday. Um, Kerry has sent out invitations or given that. Um, and we hope to get more people there to see what we can do. I think these are great ways to hear from people that don't um, normally speak for ideas for what we also want to do in the new bid or things that we should be completing um, in this current bid. So all the board members are welcome. I think it's a great way to meet the stakeholders. We had a really terrific um, meeting, the annual meeting, which we didn't actually put on here and talk about. But it was a terrific turnout, and then we had it at um, Emerson College. It was a great venue. Um, just a lot of, I think, engaged people. Um, so if you weren't able to attend that meeting, um, you come to the, this, um, which is more um, people from the community there. Um, do you want to take this gallery? Is that a meeting yesterday? Sure. Yeah, we have a. A meeting with the Sacramento officials. They flew down literally for one hour and gave us an update on the courthouse just off of all the Bronx. 60,000 square feet. The current building is being torn down as well as the subterranean parking. Evidently, there's legislation that says a any kind of government facility cannot be on a fault zone. As of right now, according to the map that they put out, the fault is literally about 10 feet in to the current courthouse. So they have to raise it and it'll be set back to accommodate the fault. <laughs> accommodate the fault. Closer to the sidewalk. Closer to the sidewalk. Yeah. 
and they are very cognizant of the landscape architecture concept that we want to bring in. Just don't put up four walls. They're going to be working. Uh, we're about a year away, I think, from actual any type of construction. Wait, they're going to knock down the whole building? Yeah, the whole thing's coming down. For Parking almost, will be in the back. No to build another courthouse. <laughs> this is insane. It's because of the fault. They, it, was, it would have been under construction right now, but they did a yeah. seismic study and they have a map that shows where it looks like the fault zone is, so and it's on the back of the property. Are they trenched? And they did some testing, the state geologist. And you see they found a finger of the actual fault. That was actually, it's not the fault itself, it's the finger of the fault. So, 100 feet high, five stories, I think. Yeah, it was four, five, four, four, five, four stories. Four stories. Mm -hmm. And there will be public parking in the back. Evidently, this may or may not be for jurors only or staff, but there's a lot of discussion of the concern of parking, so that's on the table. There will be a drop-off zone off of Hollywood Boulevard. And I think one outstanding question is still gonna be the actual Sheriff's Department buses are going to be entering on Hollywood, dropping off the inmates and then exiting on Carlos. So it's gonna go through Hollywood down the west side of the property, out to Carlos and then back around. I, it's, I think it's a little bit of a challenge because those buses are huge. Right. They're pretty big. But that is, that's on the table right now. Two year project, it's gonna start in about a year. Funding is not in place as of yet. They have enough funding to get to and through the planning and design process, but there's no money for the construction itself. They're going back to the legislature, they're gonna try and work that out. How big is the building they're building? 60,000. And the, the, what's the current building, how big is that? That was 25, or something like that, in that neighborhood. Um, is that include the parking? Did you see no, that there's no, no this is just pure raw square footage. And two year project is slated right now right now so in 2019 it will be set to be open exclusively mental health there will be no housing of inmates overnight so they'll be bus in and out from twin towers or county jail and other than that outside of the funding which is a pretty big piece yeah. of the puzzle that's where we stand right now it also will not have a commissary on the inside. It will not have so a commissary. It will be a great uh, opportunity for business jurors and staff and attorneys and family people to partake of neighborhood businesses. Explore the, the neighborhood yeah. to kind of get cleaned up. Good stuff. Oh, you know, one of the things that I didn't mention, um, and this is going to be for Joe, is he planning for the next meeting of doing the documentary? Oh, the video that we showed at the all property? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I was you got it. <laughs> you got it. That was awesome. Um, so, um, also, Gallo's Gal had a busy month. Yes, you don't have to be on the bidding roll committee because you're on Old Hollywood. Oh, I'll take that. I won't have to take off. He was in a meeting on. that we had with the Salvation Army here yeah. um, a few weeks ago. We had the opportunity to meet with. Um, Three key leaders of the Salvation Army. We've been asking to have a meeting with as neighbors, um, and they asked me not to bring all the neighbors, so I just brought one neighbor, and that was Gallo. And I think it was productive to um, engage them in conversation about uh, some of the issues uh, and concerns relative to having a daily feeding program at the Salvation Army. So um, one of the things that has resulted from that is that they've asked me to sit on in on their community advisory board, which is at seven thirty in the morning. So, <laughs> but that's a good step. That's a, that's good a step. huge first step. Yeah. Yeah. And also the Salvation Army captain or whatever he was was at the courthouse meeting yesterday. So they are trying to get more involved in the community. Um, let's see. Um, Public records request update. Um, I only have one pending public records request, so it's um, been pretty manageable. And uh, I think that's all I have. Anything else on the staff? I, I should mention that I had the pleasure of getting, having a hard hat tour of the Dream Hotel, Tower Restaurant, and Beauty in Essex. 
and seeing their master plan for that area with Thompson Hotel, Tawny Hotel, went through Mama Shelter. Uh, they have Dream Phase 2, Tao's Building Boutique Hotel, all right in that intersection of Wilcox and Selma. And uh, it was, it's going to dramatically change what what happens in Hollywood. The Gilbert is like, yeah, right in the middle. Middle. be in that location. We ended up right in the middle. You know, and it, it's, uh, so the, the five church guys that built the dream bought the Citizen News building, mm -hmm. which was next door to Mama Shelter. They're building uh, the Thompson Hotel behind that. What's the time frame, John? When are they going? Well, Dream will be open in December. And, uh, you know, Tao's a 20,000 square foot restaurant. It's going to be one of the biggest restaurants in, in LA. Beauty in Essex is 10,000 feet. So it's still one of the biggest restaurants. That's on Cahuenga in the old three-dog cantina. And then uh, though they should be open early next year at the very latest. They may be done by December. So really quickly, you're gonna see a bunch of beautiful people show up. <laughs> Better, that are ugly, but they have a lot of money. <laughs> Which makes them beautiful. <laughs> but it'll be exciting. I'm telling you right now, you won't believe it. Okay, officially. Thank you.